I recorded it now. Okay, so what are you saying then? Hello, I'm Georgie and I'm Georgie's channel. Goodbye. I hope you see George. Oh, Joe, I'm, I'm so I. I'm going to read now a book called How the Dinosaurs Got to His Shoes. I think this is very interesting. Let's see. Wow, we got a lot of shoes and boots here and few dinosaurs. And here we have a dinosaur's plane with many shoes. Oh, what do we have here? Two children digging up and they find shoes. Hmm. People have always wondered why they find piles of shoes wherever they find dinosaurs' bones. The truth is that all dinosaurs used to wear shoes, all of them, that is, except Terence Rex. I wonder why. It wasn't that Terence didn't want to wear shoes. Without them, he was always treading on thistles or stabbing his toes on rock or leaving footprints everywhere, so that the other dinosaurs knew it must be him that had stolen the biscuits. It was just that. He could never find any shoes that were quite right. But after one particularly sore feet, stabby toe sort of a morning, Terence decided that enough was enough. He set off to find the perfect pair of scarpe. And look at him. He was, is that it, is it? Stealing his biscuits. It wasn't long before Terence found a dinosaur twirling around a pair of pinky ballet shoes. Hello, what's your name? Ciao, mi chiamo Steg, said the other dinosaur. Could I try on your pink scarpe? asked Terence. See, si, of course you can try on my scarpe rosa, said Steg. Wow, that is going to be an adventure. Terence put on the scarpe rosa and started to dance with joy. He wheeled, he thrilled, he leapt through the air, right onto a prickly twistle. Ouch, cried Terence. Le scarpe rosa were just too thin. No, these are all right, but I can't expect to find the right scarpe after trying on just one pair. Thank you, Stag. Goodbye. The next dinosaur Terence met was wearing sparkly white disco scarpe. Look, it's quite flashy dinosaurs. Ciao. Come ti chiami, said Terence. Mi chiamo Trish, said the dinosaurs. Oh, dinosauro. Could I try on your white scarpe? Si, of course, said Trish. Terence popped on the scarpe bianche and looked down at his feet. But the scarpe bianche sparkled and shone and made his eye hurt. Look at him. Can't take the, the sparkle in his eye. No, this scarpe aren't quite right either, said Terence. But I've only tried on one, two pairs. Grazie, Trish. Ciao. Terence walked on until he met a, di a dinosaur as tall as the trees wearing red high heel scarpe. It is wearing two pairs, isn't it? And the front one are particularly nice. Ciao, Terence shouted up to her. Come ti chiami? Mi chiamo Brigitte, said the tall dinosaur. Terence told Brigitte about his search for scarpe. When he asked her, she kicked off a red scarpe for him to try. 
he climbed onto the scarpe rosa, but they were so tall, he wibbled and wobbled and fell right on his bottom. Fine. No, these shoes aren't right either, but I've only tried on uno, due, tre pairs. Grazie, Brigitte. Ciao. Terence left the forest and found a pair of dinosauri in shiny black top scarpe, bashing their heads together. Ciao, mi chiamo Crush, said the first dinosaur, e io mi chiamo Wallop, said the second. Could I try on your black scarpe? asked Terence. Wallop gave Terence his Scarpe nere. But when Terence tried them on, all the tipping and tapping gave him a terrible headache. Look at him, he's suffering. No, these aren't right, but I've only tried on uno, due, tre, quattro pairs. Maybe I'll find the rice scarpe at the watering hole. There were lots of dinosauri at the watering hole and lots of scarpe to try on. Il paio di scarpe number 5 were green trainers, but le scarpe verde were too sporty. Il paio di scarpe number 6 were orange football boots, but le scarpe arancioni were too smelly. Yeah, yucky. Il paio di scarpe numero 7 were big purple boots, but le scarpe viola were too heavy. Very. He can't lift his feet. Il paio di scarpe numero 8 were yellow wellies, but le scarpe gialle were too dinosauro dangi. Oh. I've tried on uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, Sette, otto paia di scarpe, and none of them have been right, said Terence. Just then, a flying dinosaur wearing blue scarpe with wheels on the bottom landed beside him. Ciao, said the flying dinosaur. When she saw Terence, mi chiamo Penny, please, to meet you. Ciao, said Terence, could I try on your blue scarpe? See, sí, of course, said Penny. These scarpe blue are great, said Terence, whistling around. I wonder where I can get a pa. I will the rolling down the hill and crashing into a tree trunk. It's hopeless, Terence cried. I've tried on uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove paia di scarpe now, and not one of them has been right. I'm going to have sore feet and stubbed toes forever. But the other dinosaurs are looking at him. Actually, there is one more paia di scarpe for you to try, said a voice from the bushes. There was a rustling and Brigitte appeared, following by all the other dinosauri Terence had met that day. We all had so much fun watching you try on our scarpe that we wanted to say grazie, said Stack. So we bought you a present. Penny swooped down next to them, carrying a large box. What might be in the pair of in the bags? Terence opened the box. Inside he found a pair of fancy brown scarpe. They weren't too thin, or too shiny, or too smelly, or too loud, or too dirty. And they were just his size. Grazie, said Terence, putting on the scarpe marroni. I've tried on uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci paia di scarpe now. And these are one are perfect. And although he didn't have a little trouble, 
with the laces, from time to time, Terence Rex never had sore feet or stubbed toes ever again, all thanks to his carpet marauding. Nice story, isn't it? Bye! I recorded it now. Okay, so what are you saying then? Hello, I'm Georgie and I'm Georgie's channel. Goodbye. I hope you see George. Oh, Joe. I'm, I'm, 